Books and tea is pretty much the perfect combination, right? I mean, you only have to look on Instagram at the hashtag books and tea to see how many people love having a cup of tea while they read. And this book break vlog is all about our mission to find the perfect tea for every book. And as soon as we can, we are going to be running a giveaway where you have the chance to win the amazing prize of every book and every tea that we show you in this video. But while we're all stuck indoors, let's go on this virtual tour together. I got the lovely Marisa from the Instagram account Tea From Above to take me to a bunch of her favourite tea rooms. Hi, nice to meet you guys and thanks Emma for bringing me along to talk about tea and books. They are the perfect combo. Yeah, I'm so excited. So I have chosen here a stack of books, no peeking, <laughs> that I'm going to challenge Marisa to find me the perfect tea pairings for. And then so throughout this video we're going to go on a tour of all of the best places in London to have tea. And we decided to meet here at Cats of Tea 100 because we have just published this lovely book, The Book of Tea. This is a gorgeous new edition of a book from 1906, which is all about how the simplicity of Japanese life is inspired by teaism, which is a term that this author coined. So, to go with this book, what is this that we're drinking? We are drinking a green tea, which mm -hmm. is the main type of tea grown in Japan. And this is again maicha, which is a green tea that's blended with toasted rice. It used to be a peasant's tea. They used to add the rice to the green tea to bulk it up so that it would last longer but it ended up having this really delicate and delicious flavour, so it became really, really popular. Okay, let's try You can taste that kind of toasted rice flavour coming really through can. the tea as well. Okay, so while we're here in a Japanese tea room, I've got my first book challenge for you. I've been reading a lot of Japanese fiction lately, so I thought that would be a good link here. Um, and this is If Cats Disappeared From The World by Genki Karamura, which is a really philosophical, complex book about this guy who finds out he only has a few days left to live, but he can make a deal with the devil where if he makes various things disappear from the world, it gives him an extra day of life. So he makes like phones disappear from the world or cats disappear from the world. So it's one, it's a book that really leaves you thinking about it. So what would be the perfect Japanese tea to drink with this? I think the perfect Japanese tea to drink with that would be a matcha. So let's order some of that and I can take you through it. So here we have some matcha in all sorts of forms. Cool. And I think it'll go really well with your book because like your book, matcha is really complex. There's a lot going on, lots of aromatic flavours. So the match translates as powder mm -hmm. and cha as tea. There should be a really lovely, sweet, lingering aftertaste. You'll still be thinking about the book and you'll still be tasting the tea. Lovely. I see what you mean, it is a really like unusual yeah. flavour. It's probably not something you've tried before. Definitely not. And I've got some ceremonial grey matcha here, which is just beautiful and frothy. Yeah. And the bit I'm most excited about, can we try this cake? I think we should. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, so that was delicious. Are you ready for your next challenge? Hit me. Okay, so I know that tea has a history from all over the world. We've been to Japan, but I wanted to explore that a bit more. So the next book I've got is this gorgeous little Macmillan Collector's Library book of Poems for Travellers, with an introduction by Paul Theroux, and it's this lovely collection of poems all about travelling and going on journeys. So where are you going to take me for this? Well, I know this book is all about travelling, but I'm actually going to take you somewhere very English. Okay. I promise it will make sense when we get there. So we are here at the famous English department store, Fortnum and Mason's, and they have the most beautiful, huge and beautiful tea department, and they sell the most fabulous it's tea. amazing. We just walked in through the tea ware, and it was so cool. Oh, I could spend hours in there. Yeah. They had, like, Alice in Wonderland ones that were so cool, with, like, Alice wearing sunglasses and playing the guitar, and then some really traditional ones, and I love so it. So cute. And also a wall of flying teacups going yes, upstairs. Yes, so oh, beautiful. Cool. It's like a teacup dream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already having the best time. So we are trying the Fortnum's breakfast blend. The term English breakfast basically describes what the English brought to tea. So before the 1900s, tea was never blended, but the English used tea leaves from all over the world, blenders it into one um, tea and it became an English breakfast tea. So it's perfect for poems for travellers, but you can have um, breakfast teas that include tea leaves from 
Assam in India, for example, like the Falklands does, yeah. or from Ceylon and Sri Lanka, or from Kenya and Africa. That's so funny that it's called English breakfast and the kind of defining feature is that it's like this blend from all, all over. over the world. <laughs> yeah, but there's always one thing in common and that it's a strong multi-robustness and it's perfect for waking you up in the morning. Are you ready for the next challenge? Yeah. Okay, this one is a really lovely First World War story. So it's set in London in the 1940s. And it's really, it's really sad and moving, but it's really fun as well. So it's about a young girl called Emmy who wants to be a journalist. But the only job she can get is working for an agony aunt called Mrs. Bird. So I'm picturing for this one something like quite traditional, sort of like the really gorgeous afternoon teas that you often put on your Instagram. Well, in that case, I don't think we need to go anywhere. I think we should stay at Portland's and, and move, from, <laughs> yeah, move from breakfast tea to an afternoon tea. So I'm going to order us something. I think an Earl Grey would be great with this book. So okay. I'm going to order us some of that, but also maybe something else a little bit special. Exciting. Look at this. Look yeah. at this. amazing. So much so food. <laughs> So we're going to be drinking some Fortnum's Earl Grey Classic. Lovely. The Prime Minister Earl Grey gave his name to this very sought after tea in the 1830s and it's very much known as the sort of tea that you drink in the afternoon. Okay. It's a black tea flavoured with oil of bergamot, yeah. which gives it an uh, orange citrusy flavour. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have it with milk or without milk, or even people have it with a slice of lemon. Mm -hmm. But it's the perfect cup of tea to have with an afternoon tea, hence the amazing <laughs> afternoon so tea. So exciting. <laughs> oh, doesn't it look amazing? So you've got tea, you've got scones. It's so traditionally English. I yeah. thought it'd be perfect to go with dear Mrs. Bird. Yeah, And perfect. also, doesn't the colour of the cover just match the Fortnum's famous turquoise teacups? It looks so well. Like, unbelievably lovely together. Yeah. Perfect. So, I've actually read this book, and I remember um, the character, Mrs. Bird, having so many old school rules and regulations. And funny enough, so does afternoon tea. Okay, like what? So, for example, the saucer should never leave the table, so you can lift the teacup yeah. But never lift the teacup and saucer. Okay, I didn't know that. You should never make a whirlwind in your tea. To stir your tea, go from top to bottom. I literally made a whirlwind earlier. Okay. <laughs> um, whatever you do, don't clink. That is very much against the rules. Okay. There's also a, quite a common phrase, which is pinkies up. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary to raise your little finger. Okay. It just looks a bit silly. I always wondered. <laughs> There's also a lot of rules about whether you put jam or cream first on your scone. I've always had this debate. It's a hot debate depending where you are in the country. Okay. Um, but to be honest, layer it how you like. It tastes delicious okay. either way. That's a really <laughs> I feel ready to have tea with the queen now. Perfect. How do you like to do your scones? So I am team cream first. Cream first. I think I'm jam first. Well, I'm not sure we can be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Should we make them up and see which one looks best? Yeah. Let's do it. Competition. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I could eat afternoon tea for every meal, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That was delicious. Oh, so full. <laughs> really full. Before you give me the next book, I'm just okay. going to give a little treat, which is a sparkling tea. Who oh, knew? wow. Not champagne, but even better, sparkling tea. Amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really nice. Tasty. I might like that even better than champagne. <laughs> Well, I didn't know how you were going to top this whole experience because mm -hmm. that was amazing. But I've got your next challenge. This one is a big challenge. This is a fantasy book, which is a bit unexpected, I thought, for a tea pairing. This is Source of the Crown by Zen Cho, which is kind of set in an alternate Regency Britain. So it's got sorcery, it's got witches, it's got magic and dragons. Do you have any ideas? Fantasy is quite hard. I'm thinking pairing with tea. And I thought this might be impossible, but actually I have an idea. Fantastic. Let's go. So I have brought you to Jing Tea in Mayfair, London, okay. where Will is going to take us through an oolong tea tasting session. Exciting. And oolong will be great for your book about dragons, because oolong, the word, comes from the Chinese name wulong, which means dark dragon. And there's Perfect. lots of myths and stories about where this name came from, but essentially it's kind of a long, dark, curly tea leaf, which looks like a dragon's tail. Cool. But Will is the expert, so he's going to take us through it. Awesome. Should we try some tea? Yes, yeah, please. Brilliant. So the first tea we're going to try is called Iron Buddha. 
and this is a borrowed oolong tea that comes from Fujian in southeast China. Oh, yeah. Very, very, very sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. So now we're moving from Fujian province to Guangdong province in the south of China, and we're going to try Phoenix Honey Orchid. And this one is where you can begin to see the relevance of the name. Now we're looking at these kind of dragon esque shapes. Yeah. The aroma of this tea is stunning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different to that. Very different, yes. Lingered, it? So the last tea we're going to try, we're going to go back to Fujian province, to the Wei Mountains, and we're going to try a Wei Oolong. The kind of tasty flavour in that one. Once you get people into it, um, they just, they love it. Because yeah, it's almost yeah. like a life skill. It's like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. almost like sorcery. It's almost <laughs> like sorcery. <laughs> it's like it's sorcery. Like sorcery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great match, well done, thank you for that one. So my next one, I think this one's gonna be a bit easier. So I've gone for something focused on flavor. Mm -hmm. So this book is Gingerbread by Helen Iomi. This is a book I absolutely love. It's like a Hansel and Gretel fairy tale retelling. It's all about gingerbread. And they talk a lot about the flavor of the gingerbread, mm -hmm. the kind of cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, obviously, and cloves. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for a tea with that kind of flavor profile. This one is gonna be easy. I know exactly where to go. So our last stop is this gorgeous Indian restaurant, Cinnamon Bazaar in London. It's absolutely beautiful. It's stunning, isn't it? I love the decor here. And we are drinking their delicious chai because I think the taste and the smell of chai would go perfectly with your book, Gingerbread. Oh, it smells so good. It does smell good. So chai is the Hindi word for tea. And it's a black tea with, mixed with really intense spices. So often kind of cumin, cardamom, cinnamon, and ginger. Perfect. So perfect with your book. And it's traditionally made with milk and sugar, and it just smells amazing, mm. so. Oh, it's so good. It's really that good. That kind of tastes exactly how I imagined the gingerbread in this. Perfect. So perfect match. Really kind of warming kick of spice. Yeah. So while you're drinking that, I actually have a book for you. Oh, okay. So this is The Year of the Runaways by Sunjeev Sahota, and it's about three immigrants who moved from India to Sheffield in search of work. And it follows their hopes and their dreams and the impossible decisions that they have to make. Wow, sounds amazing. It's so good, and it really kind of took me back to my trip to Mumbai. It conjures up the hustle and bustle of the streets of um, India, where you have chai wallets on the roadside selling chai, and kids running through the alleyways delivering the chai and steaming cups of tea to amazing. people. Amazing. It's the perfect book to read for the warming cup of chai. Oh, that sounds great. I'll definitely read that. And be drinking a lot more of this. So I hope you've enjoyed following us around on our tea tour and thanks so much to Marisa for introducing me to so many lovely teas. Do make sure you're following Tea From Above for gorgeous tea photos and let us know in the comments what your ideal book and tea pairing would be. See you next time.